I'll be honest, this dish isn't the most beautiful in the world, but it is not about what it looks like, it's about what's inside, and the flavor of this French onion chicken is absolutely incredible. Let's go straight into it. Starting out, we're going to need four large brown or yellow onions. We can remove both ends, just the tip and the root, and also slice this in half, removing that skin, and you can save all of the scraps for a stock. There's two ways that we can slice the onion. The first way is in the half moon position, which is what I'm doing here. Just make sure you tilt it down towards the end to make it easier to slice. These will be smaller pieces of onion though. And the other way is to just slice it straight on. You'll get longer strands and it looks better and cooks better for caramelized onion. And you should have all of this. We're then going to grate three cloves of garlic along a microplane. I'm separating one because one's going to be used for our side dish and then two of the garlic cloves are going to be used in our caramelized onion. And just make sure you keep them separate. For the side dish to this recipe, I'm using green beans. You can use anything of your choice and you don't have to weigh these out. I'm only going to be demonstrating one serve of this recipe for this video. And if you are using green beans, just make sure you pick off the stem and then peel back that little spine that's on the back of the beans. We can then go through and do it to all of them, or you can be lazy and just chop them off with a knife. It's completely up to you. But once that's done, just make sure you give them a wash to make sure there's no grime. Last but not least, we're using three chicken breasts. Again, the amounts are up to you, depending on how many people you want to serve this to. We're going to butterfly it, so lay it flat, place a knife in through the center horizontally, and then just follow the knife through and just open it up like a butterfly. And then we're going to slice this in half into two even-sized fillets. Place the chicken into a large mixing bowl and follow that up with two and a half grams of both onion and garlic powder, two and a half grams of smoked paprika, five milliliters of olive oil just to get these lubed up, generously season it with salt, and then hit it up with cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. Get a nail with a glove or some tongs. Just mix this all until everything's evenly combined and smothered. Then we can pop this aside for the time being. Now the first thing we're going to cook is the French onions or the caramelized onions. Place 35 grams of unsalted butter into a pan over medium high heat. Add in all of those onions and you don't have to wait for the butter to completely melt. Generously season it with salt. Then we can mix this around and what we're going to do is just cook this for 10 minutes over a medium high heat. Constantly moving it around pretty much all the time and just be careful nothing falls out of the pan. You can also practice that flick of the wrist here as well. It's a good way to practice. Gets everything mixed around nice and evenly too. After 10 minutes, you'll have some beautiful color on the onions. They're obviously not completely cooked at this stage. They're still quite al dente. We're then going to deglaze the pan with 80 milliliters of white wine or chicken stock if you can't consume alcohol. Just give this a mix around and whilst it's over that medium high heat, just cook this for one minute. To enhance the flavor even more, add in 125 milliliters of beef stock, 10 milliliters of Worcestershire sauce, 10 milliliters of balsamic vinegar, that's umami and sweetness, the two garlic cloves that we did before, five dried bay leaves and five sprigs of thyme and then give this a really good mix through for those flavors to become friends we're then going to bring this up to a boil reduce the heat to low and then just let these cook down for about 30 to 40 minutes just until they're beautifully caramelized in the meantime we can prepare everything else place another large pan over a medium high heat add in 10 milliliters of olive oil and once that's hot add in the chicken we're going to sear this for about two and a half to three minutes on each side until beautifully golden and a beautiful crust has been formed we don't want to cook this the whole way through right now because there is going to be a little bit of resting time and it also has to go in the oven as well once you have that achieved we can then remove these place them onto a baking tray you can line it with parchment paper if you want to save on cleanup and then just set these aside for the time being and repeat any remaining batches if you're using green beans like me place a saucepan of water over a high heat season it with salt and then bring it to a boil when you can place on a lid to hurry up the process once it is at a boil remove the lid and then we can dunk in the green beans and this is blanching and it's just a cooking process that helps reduce the quality loss over time we're going to do this for about three to four minutes just to get these a little bit al dente then we can remove them place them into ice cold water and that's going to shock them and immediately stop the cooking process also, blanching helps retain color in the vegetables, especially when we're going to be pan frying. As for that, place another pan over a medium high heat, add in one tablespoon of olive oil, then we can add in those beans. Just make sure there's not too much water on them because they will start to spit. Season them up with salt and a little bit of cracked black pepper. I used about 10 cracks worth here. Then we're going to mix these around and just pan fry them or saute them for about two minutes just to get a little bit of color on them and to also soften them up. Once that is done, we can then add in that one clove of garlic just continuously mix this, make sure it's not all clumped up, make sure everything's evenly combined, getting that beautiful garlic infusion all over it. And cook this for one more minute, just mixing it around constantly, just so that garlic doesn't burn. And once you have beautiful green beans that look like this, have a slight little bit of caramelization on them, we can then remove it from the heat. 
go back to the caramelized onion. This has been kept over that low heat for about 35 minutes. They're beautiful, they smell fantastic, and they're soft and syrupy. We can then remove these from the heat. And we're going to top the chicken with the caramelized onion. The amounts are completely up to you here. And then we can grate over some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, or Parmesan cheese, just enough to cover it. And I'm also going to swap cheeses and then just use Gruyere. This is really stringy, so just be careful if you're using a microplane. Make sure you cover it completely. And you can also use mozzarella as well. The cheeses are up to you. Just make sure that they're good melting cheeses. Once you have that done, transfer it over to a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius on grill or broil. Cook these for about five to six minutes until you get a beautiful golden crust. Then we can scoop these up. And this right here is the French onion chicken on its own without everything else. And it looks and smells absolutely delicious, but also really ugly at the same time. As for serving, place down those garlic green beans. Like I said, I'm only demonstrating one serving right here, so that's why I did the small amount of green beans. Place over that delicious French onion chicken, and I use two fillets per portion. And I'm also going to use any of the pan juices left in the caramelized onions just to drizzle it over. And once that's all done, we have this complete dish, the French onion chicken. It smells delicious, it looks delicious, a little bit ugly, but absolutely fantastic. As always though, there is only one thing left to do, and that is, of course, we can then dig in. I know this isn't the most beautiful dish in the world, but neither is French onion soup, and they're both absolutely delicious. The caramelized onions have the perfect flavor, the perfect texture. They're sweet, a little bit salty, not too sweet though, without adding sugar. And of course you can add sugar if you wanted to. The cheese goes with it absolutely perfectly, and you can also use mozzarella as well. As for the sides, obviously went with those garlic green beans, but you can really do whatever you want. It's all up to you. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, really does help me out and consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.